Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I'm gonna give you some tips to survive easier on PP server on Dave Dragons. Again, this might be quite a complete video since I'm gonna try to give as many tips I can think about. If you like the video and want to see more tutorials of Dave Dragon, you can subscribe to my channel. I post some tutorials and other PP videos there. So let's get started. First, if it's not already done, you should go in your settings, game, and art style, you should put it to RPG or survival plus RPG. What this does is you will see, you will have on the bottom right of your screen, uh, your HP bar in green, shield bar in blue, and bile bar in orange. It also had uh, anger and thirst icon when you are above 50% of those. So you don't have to go in your character panel to see those every time. You can also act Enable the static compass. What this does is you you can see in your character panel there is a compass on the top of your screen. Well with static compass enabled, you don't need to go in your character panel to see that compass. It will always be shown on the top of your screen. If you want to play on official servers, you have four options for PvP. You have US1 and 2, but as you can see are the most populated. Those are also the server where there is the biggest clans most of the time. Those servers are ruled by mega clans. So if you want to survive there, you want to be the most careful as possible. And that will be the subject of today's video. You also have server seven and eight, which as you can see are less populated. But in that case, when you get into a fight, it will most of the case be a 1v1. Currently, there is three PC available, the Flamestalker, the Shadow Scale, and the Acid Drake. While they all have their advantage and disadvantage in PvP, if you are alone, I would rather not pick the Flamestalker, for three main reasons. First, it's the longest time to grow. It takes almost four hours to get the full agilent. And I will be honest, if you are beginning, especially on official server 1 or 2, you will die a lot. And it's not especially a bad thing. If you know what killed you, why did you die, what could have you done better, or what mistake did you make, that's how you're gonna improve the most. Don't get discouraged and don't make the same mistake over and over. Second reason why I wouldn't pick the Flamestalker is because it's big and slow. If you get to a fight that you can't win, let's say you engage someone and three more dragons show up, then you will need to escape. And as a Flamestalker, you won't be able to hide easily. If you try to fly through trees, since you have such a, wing, a big wingspan, people will spot you easily. And since you are slow, you won't be able to distance other dragons. Also, you don't have a defensive ability like the Shadow Scale of the Cloak or the Acid Drake can have the Decay. Your thermal vision will be really situational and won't help you to survive. And third reason is stats. Since the Flamestalker have the biggest base stats in the game, that means that there is more difference between a spawned Flamestalker and a nested Flamestalker. So you rather avoid starting with a disadvantage. So that leaves us with two species. The Shadow Scale and the Acid Drake. First, let's talk about the advantages. For the Shadow Scale, it's his speed. In fact, that's the fastest dragon in the game currently. So you can speed any other species and the shadow cloak will help you to get out of sight of potential enemies. For the acid drake, it will be that it's the fastest to grow. In fact, it only takes one and a half hour to get to full adult so you can get into the action quickly. It's also really small and since you're only underground, you are really hard to spot. Also, his decay ability can help you to ground dragon for easy kill or escape. Now, let's talk about the disadvantages. For the Acid Drake, it will be his HP. It can be one-shotted by a full charge shadow scale, and a good burn for a face soccer can save your fate if you don't get to water quickly. Obviously, you also need to come to ground, so it might be harder to spot targets and get around the map quickly. For the Shadow Scale, 
each disadvantage would be that it takes a bit longer to go than the acid drake. And it also requires more knowledge about how to fly and how to shoot, since if you don't really master those, you won't be really effective as a shadow scale. You can also die quite fast to flames or other acid tricks. The first tip will be about growing. When you first spawn in, look at food and water, and once that's done, go a bit further from it, in under the cover of some trees or in some bushes, and avoid unnecessary noises. Because if someone is hunting, he will most likely look at the water sources where he is most likely to find dragons. And if you are sitting right next to it, it will be easy to spot. You also want to locate some shrooms, because they are quick to eat and give a lot of food compared to bugs. If you are not drinking or eating, you want to be sleeping all the time. Because if an enemy shows up, you can quickly say flog. You never know when you will be attacked. That's why you want to keep enough stamina to escape at all time. Never get below 50% stamina if you can avoid it. If you want to travel from point A to point B, use mountains. Take off from a mountain and just glide down to your destination. That way, if you get into trouble, you will be full stamina to escape. You will also be really high in the sky, so people will most likely not see you. Always keep an eye to the local chat. Sometimes, clan especially, will want to know who you are, because they want to know if you are an enemy of them. You will often see messages like who, or if they feel more creative, something a bit more explicit. You want to answer to that. Say whatever, you can say just a dot, or say hello. Whatever, just answer something so they see your name and they will most likely not attack you if they see that you mean no harm to them. That means if you are not in a clan that is enemy to them or, or if you never cause problems into global chat. You want to avoid clans as much as possible since you can fight them alone. Since you are most likely to fight them at Elder Shroom location, I would avoid those places. That means Lime. Island, Fried Rock, Crater, and Ravine. You want to pick fight that you can win. So before jumping into a fight blindly, always take the information on your enemies. I mean, as a shadow scale, you can fly with your eye above them to know how many they are and how poor or full they could be. As an ASD, you can sneak around trees and bushes while being undetected. Do not stay for too long in the same place. You never know, maybe you have been spotted, or if you kill the dragon, more might come for vengeance. Always stay on the move, so if you are being hunted, you are harder to locate. Stay aware of sounds. It is the best indicator to know that another dragon is around you, since you can sometimes hear sounds beyond visual range, giving you a direction and the approximate distance of a dragon. We can separate sounds in two range, close and far. Here are some examples. Next tip is to use the environment to your advantage. Use trees as cover, learn where is the closest water source to remove burn or decay, and know where is the closest forest you can escape in. If you are not faster, or know that you don't have more stamina than your opponent, then escaping in a forest is your best bet to survive. Redwoods, lime, or outdoor forests are perfect for that. This is why you should practice flying through trees. It will improve your overall flight and give you more options depending on the situation to escape or counter-attack if you are your enemy crush. Remember, if you are about to eat a tree, you can press F to cancel your flight and negate impact damage. On shadow scale, you can cloak cancel. 
a technique that allows you to quickly disappear for a second without consuming stamina. To perform, you need to use the Shadow Cloak and Bite not long after. Combined with combat or tree flying, it can be used to quickly disappear from sight, then turn or bounce on a tree to reappear somewhere unexpected. For the Acid Drake, the decay inflicted by our bites, or sometimes spits, drains stamina from dragons. While other Acid Drakes are immune to it, it can keep a shadow scale or flame stalker on the ground, making it easier to kill or giving you a chance to escape. Keep in mind that if you are near water, the decay can easily be removed. Last tip will be to not panic. It can sound stupid like that, but trust me, if you start to panic, you will make mistakes. Yes, you can get 20 HP. Yes, you can have 10 dragons after you. But starting to go everywhere will not help. You must remain focused and think about the fastest way to get out of the situation. What is your escape route? Where is the closest forest or source of water? What technique can you use to lose your opponent or get an advantage on them? You won't always be able to get out of any situation, but it's alright. Like I said at the beginning, look back at what went wrong and don't make the same mistakes again. That pretty much concludes this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, the comments are here for that. I read all of them, so don't hesitate if something isn't clear. I hope it helped a bit.